Everyone, hope everything's going well. Guys and gals, know that drill. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below. Follow me on Instagram at AIH underscore sports. Follow me on my finance channel at AIH Finance. All right, got this card over here. We have Dave Corzine. He used to play with the Chicago Bulls back in the day. Got this nice autograph of him. And this is on the Entenmann's card from the 1980s. When I was a kid, my mom used to always take me to the Entenmann's store. I think it's still around, but now they've shifted their business and they've moved into retail stores. They just say, hey, look, sell our bread. And a lot of the stores in the Chicago land area are now closed. So I really like that. I have a few other cards of the Entenmann set actually on me. Maybe I could show them to you. I just have to go through them. Didn't expect. You know, go through it here. No, it's not here. Actually, it's here. I put these in these ultra pro semi rigid holders or whatever they're called. John Paxson, right? You got what? Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley used to play for the Bulls and then he got traded for uh, Bill Cartwright. It actually helped the Bulls. Jordan was pissed off about that. Another horse Grant card here. Jack Haley, he's uh, no longer with us. And he did win one title with the Bulls. And then the, another Horace Grant card. There are, you know, Michael Jordan. There's a Michael Jordan Entenmann's card. Uh, there is also a Scottie Pippen card as well. So, yeah, it is what it is. I think those cards for collectors, they definitely like those cards from my understanding. So, it is what it is. Now, I want to touch base on this one clip that was sent to me. And it's regarding Fanatics hiring the ex-head of the Chicago division of the FBI, this individual used to do quite a bit. I mean, you could Google his name if you want. He retired, from my understanding, this was last year. And now he's on to a new role in Fanatics. I knew about this role. or I knew that this guy joined Fanatics through a source of mine. And what I did to confirm this, I think a month ago, I just sent a test email to this guy and it didn't come back as rejected. And then I thought to myself, okay, this guy definitely works there. I didn't say this publicly, but privately I've been telling a few people about this. And what Jeff Wilson was telling cage is that one of the reasons why they hired this guy was to make sure that product isn't tampered with was the, who was high up in the FBI who, who was just hired by Fanatics and Tops specifically for uh, integrity monitoring. And one of his duties was to, was to monitor and ensure the fair uh, distribution of product and that none of it was tampered with and that nobody was getting preferential you know, loaded boxes or anything of that sort. They literally hired an FBI agent, a senior FBI agent to head that up. So I don't think they're messing around. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't believe that at all. The reason why I don't believe that at all is I've done the numbers on some of the boxes that Mama Breaks has opened. It just seems very odd how she has pulled in the past a lot of these hits that the average guy and gal cannot get. Could it be a coincidence? Sure, but I just don't believe that they're doing fanatics, in my opinion. I don't think they're doing a thorough job in terms of these loaded boxes, right? A lot of people talking about how Mama Breaks gets these hits or has gotten these hits. I'm going to do a video in the next week or two showing that, that the numbers don't add up, in my opinion. And also, I think they hired this FBI guy to make sure that obviously there isn't too much fraud going on just to cut it down. They're going to go public fanatics, right? 
and they need someone in the collectibles division where there's a lot of hanky-panky going on. And in regards to the PWCC acquisition, they got Brent on board for a while, but they got rid of him. I believe the FBI guy told them to get rid of this dude. And, you know, that guy Brent did a lot of hanky-panky, literally and figuratively, from my understanding. So it's just quite interesting to have the FBI head there. Now, I don't think they're doing enough yet. And the, one of the reasons why is a lot of people won't talk about this publicly, but there's this one drug trafficker, former drug trafficker, People could find his mugshot if they'd like online. And, you know, he's involved in the high end. He was buying from PWCC. He buys from Golden. He buys from all these high big wigs. And you're telling me that they don't have the right compliance? Or let me say this again. I don't think they have the right compliance department to prevent someone with a questionable background. So if we know one person in the open is a former drug trafficker and we don't know where he's getting his money from by the way and if they're buying from pwcc they're buying from golden and let's focus on pwcc and fanatics right what is the fbi guy going to do about that right and what is their compliance department if they have any going to do about other individuals where their money is not legit Okay, that's what I'm curious about. Now, I think PWCC updated their regulations or rules about money laundering and all that, but I don't think they do have a great handle of it and other auctions as well in the sports card hobby. A lot of people won't touch base on this because guess what? They're not going to get that deal from Fanatics or these other sponsors. Me? I don't care. I'll tell you what's up. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Remember to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below. Thank you. Bye.